If you will, turn with me in the word of God to um, um, Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. I want to read for you um, verses 1 and 2 for your hearing. Romans chapter 12. We praise God for the graduates of this house. We thank God for the amazing things he is doing in your lives. We thank you for the sacrifices that you all have made, even as young people, to put in the time, the work, the effort, to sit down and make your minds be about your books, your studies, because we know that there are all kinds of distractions that are calling you to do other, but for you to push through and say, I have purpose, I have calling. My life is more than a good time and a party, but, but I, I'm going to discipline myself so that I might be able to graduate to the next level of life. We praise God for you all. Romans, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Um, scripture reads, Scripture states, um, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, my brethren, one translation, I urge you to present your bodies, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, pleasing unto God. This is your reasonable act of worship. I think one translation says this is your true and proper act of worship. Be not conformed by this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and, and pleasing and perfect will of God. This is Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Um, Heavenly Father, we bless your name. You have begun to stir this word up in me about a week and a half ago, Lord God. And I thank you that what you have written on my heart, Lord God, is not only for your people, but it's for me. Thank you, Lord God, that you have pressed it, you have cut it into me. So, Lord, I pray even now that you might bring it forth, Lord God. May there not be a distraction of mind or heart, body of flesh, Lord God, that takes any away from this hour of purpose in your presence. That the fullness of your power might burst out in our lives and we, Lord, all might experience some transformation in you, Lord God. Have your way, have your way, have your way, Lord God. Have your way, holy God, have your way, Lord God. King and Savior, Father and friend, lover of our souls, have your way. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we trust and pray. Hallelujah and amen. I would like to speak to you from the subject, graduating faith, level up. Graduating faith, level up. As we stand here, as we stand here, um, gathered in this time of corporate collective worship and praise of the Lord our God, seeking to magnify and honor his name, we also come to celebrate these graduates, celebrate the hard work, the, the time, and the discipline that they have committed themselves to, the, the long nights of study, the, the early mornings of getting up to, to, to dive into dense text readings and to write essays and papers so that they now, might now be eligible to graduate that they might move from one platform of life to another platform of life, that they might be qualified to be promoted from one expression of existence to now a, a new expression of life, that we gather to celebrate these graduates. But the truth of the matter is that there are more than academic graduates up in here this Sunday morning. Because it's not only those of us who are those of them who have been in the text studying, in the classrooms writing, sitting before teachers uh, um, learning, but, but some of us have been through the school of hard knocks. Some of us have been in some classrooms in our everyday on our job and God has been shifting us. God has been working in us because God is looking to graduate us. 
some of us have been going through some things on our jobs in which God is saying, now I'm looking to move you from one level of life to a new level of life. That, that, that our walk of faith is a graduating kind of walk because we are called to move from faith unto faith. We're called, I believe it is first, or excuse me, Romans 1 chapter 17 where the word of God says that, that the gospel reveals the righteousness of God from faith unto faith, that, that, that the just shall walk by faith, that, that every single one of us are called to move from one level of existence to the next from one level of glory to the next, from, from one level of power to the next, from one level of grace to the next, that, that God is looking to do a new thing in every single one of our lives. And I don't know who it is this morning, but, but I'm talking to a graduate of faith. I, I'm talking to someone who you have put in the hard work and the time of seeking to be faithful, that God is saying, I'm looking to graduate you. I, I'm looking to promote you. I, I'm looking to matriculate you. I, I love that language because I used to read the bios of, of preachers who used to come when, when I was back under Pastor Bars Day, and it would say they matriculated from, from Duke University. They, they matriculated from Carlo University. They, they matriculated. That to matriculate means to, to mature, that they matured from one station of life to the next station of life, that they grew up from one place of life to the next station of life, that, that God promoted and elevated them from one place in life to the next place in life. And I just understand that, that there are some folk up in here, you might not even know who you are, but God said, I'm graduating you. I, I'm graduating you from, from the elementary, from, from primary school, from, from secondary school to, to graduate level school. I, I'm doing a new thing in your life. I, I'm doing a new thing in your marriage. That, that as a father, I'm doing a new thing in your life. God said, I'm promoting you. That, that you ought to get ready for the graduation. That somebody, somebody ought to give God glory that, of how he's moving you up, how he's leveling you up, how, how he's shifting you up, how, how there's something new. I, I, I recognize it don't look the same or, or, or it don't look like something has changed, but God said there is a new thing I'm breaking out in your life right this very moment and I'm about to graduate too. You see, you see, you see, I, this text, in this text, in this passage of Scripture, this, this particular pericope of Scripture, and this is actually a powerful, pivotal moment in the writing of Paul be, because Paul is graduating the believers at Rome from faith unto faith because in the first 11 chapters, Paul is dealing with belief. He is trying to instruct the Rome, the, the Christians at Rome on how to understand their faith, to, to know who they are in God and to know who the Lord their God is. So he opens up by teaching them that, that God is the sovereign creator and we are a creation. This, this is stuff of belief that, that Paul is working. He's teaching them covenant. He's, he's talking about how Israel is the root uh, 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 or the stock or, or the covenant people, but, but the Gentiles Gentiles are, have been grafted into the root, that, that, that we are equals, that Gentiles are now equal with the Jews. That's why it says the power of the gospel is first unto the, unto the Jews, but, but also unto the Gentiles. Not, not secondarily unto the Gentiles, but equally also that, that we are not second-class citizens or second-class believers in faith, but we have equally been grafted into the stock of Israel as the people of God. Paul is walking through belief. He's teaching them about the covenants of, 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 of righteousness and that how we only receive the righteousness of God for we cannot merit it on our own works and deeds. That, that it requires that we through the sacrifice of God receive the righteousness of God and through Jesus' sacrifice on the cross the righteousness of God has been imputed upon us so that we can count ourselves righteous. That I am righteous. You are righteous. 
righteous. We are righteous. Even in the midst of our failures and mistakes, we can still claim the identity of righteous ones of God because it has been imputed upon us. He's teaching belief. He's teaching baptism because we have been baptized in the death and the burial of Jesus Christ. We shall now also participate and partake in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that we can get up from our failures, get up from our flaws, get up from our shortcomings, get up from our mistakes, because he's teaching us how to understand who we are in God. He's saying that by Adam, sin or, or death entered into the world through sin. This is all the stuff of belief. But at this pivotal turning point, Paul begins to graduate the Christians at Rome because he says it's not just about what you believe, it's also about how you behave. Oh, he's saying you can't just believe it, but you also have to behave it. You, you, you can't just think it, but you also have to live it in, and you also have to walk it. He says, present your bodies as, as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. He said, you also have to live into your faith. Oh, somebody got to get it. You got to walk your faith. You got to live your faith. You got to embody your faith. You, you got to manifest your faith in bodily ways. You, you got to live that thing out. You can't just believe it. You have to behave it because if your faith is going to have any real power, you got to learn to live into it and walk that thing out because you got to believe it. You got to behave it. You got to live it. If I don't live my faith, faith, my faith is no more efficacious than that of the demons. Ah, oh, oh, oh. you see, James chapter 2 verse 19 says that, that, that you believe, it, it's good that you believe because even the demons believe that there is one God. So if I am not behaving my faith and I am only believing my faith, then that means my faith ain't that much more powerful than that of a devil's. But, but when I can behave my faith, when I can believe, but walk out and live my faith, now I can work out my salvation now. Faith without works is not dead because I'm walking into it. I, I'm behaving it. I'm living as if I'm graduated from elementary level faith to now graduate level faith. And there's somebody in here, you got to walk out and behave your faith. Oh, you see, we struggle, we struggle. You ain't got to be perfect because none of us are perfect. We all fall short of the glory. We all make mistakes. But there ought to be some actions that show that you are indeed a believer of God, that, that folk ought not look at your life and then question if you are a believer or not, but they ought to be able to say there's something about how they walk and how they talk, how, how they live and how they love, how, how they connect and how they forgive, how, how they praise and how they worship, how, how they give and how they tithe that suggests there's something peculiar about that person, that they don't just talk it with their mouth, but they walk it with their life. <laughs> Graduating faith. Paul saying, Paul saying, I, I'm shifting uh, from belief in my, my theology. It's not just about theology, but it's about ethics. It, it's not just about belief, but it's about behavior. It's about how you live into this thing because graduates, how you live matters. Because your life is your worship. Ah. Uh, We have reduced worship, Sister Denise, to Sunday morning lyrics in the church. We have reduced worship to a song at a service or an encounter when in reality worship it's my everyday walk. It's, it's my everyday life. It's, it's my everyday talk. It, it got to be, Sister D, who I am and who I be. It, it, it worship. It, it, it's, how I, it's how I love my wife. It, it's how I parent my children. It, it's how I neighbor with my neighbors. It's how I brother with my brothers. It's, it's how I partner with, with the community. It, it's how I talk. It's, it's how you walk. It's everything you do. Worship can be you out frying up some chicken. Let's get healthy. 
you baking up some chicken because how you... Because, because I, I, I could bake it and be grumbling. All uh, oh, these no for good nothing kids just keep getting on my last nerve. And, and this no good man of mine don't appreciate nothing I do. Or, or this woman, she ain't spending no quiet time with me. And yet I'm in the kitchen making food. Uh, if that's my life, that's not worship. But if I'm saying, Lord, help me, Father. Pray, uh, 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 bless this meal that, that my children might know uh, how much I I love them. Bless, bless this meal that you might turn them around and, and what they're doing. Bless this meal that my man might become who you've created in purpose and designed him, him to be. Your worship is in what you do. Your worship is in driving in the church and, and you're not flipping up the bird because you're struggling with issues of, of folk, but you're saying, oh Lord, you got me on a journey and I'm walking and living in purpose and I don't know how I'm going to get through it. And, and I can't stand all the folk I see, but but God, I surrender my issues unto you. God, I love you. My worship is in my driving. Everything you do is your worship. Because you're to at the core of your identity, you are a worshiper. The Isaiah, Isaiah in the book of Isaiah says, we were created by God to praise God which means inherent in my DNA, I'm a worshiper. Inherent in who I am, I'm called my sister to reflect and reveal the glory of God in the world. That, that my life, and no matter what it is I do, Sister D, it's called to reflect God's glory. That, that, that be it in my, my counseling, be it in my parenting, be it in your, your, your engineering, be it, be it in your, your, your custodian, be it in as a lawyer, be it as a teacher, be it as a student. At the desk, you're at the, you're at the table saying, Lord, I understand that I I got purpose and, and I'm not going to give myself to stuff that would distract me from who you created me to be but God I'm going to spend the time working out this math problem and while you got folk thinking that they're all about the math and they're all about the ambition and getting a better job and making more money you understand that your life is designed on purpose that you're going to animate some stuff that, that is going to give you some reputation but it's going to give God the glory that, that you're going to counsel and psychologize some that's going to help relieve, re, 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 release and deliver them out of some shackles that we are called to graduate from a place of simply saying, I believe, but you got to get to a place where you behave. Because the reality is, there's oftentimes too much incongruency between how I believe and how I behave. Ah, uh, there's sometimes too much of a gulf, a gap between what I say I believe, Elder Mac, and how I behave sometimes. And the truth of the matter is, it's with all of us. Can, can I put myself on the, on, on the altar for just a moment? I, 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 I believe, I believe that my body is the temple of God. The, 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 where the Holy Spirit abides and dwells within me, and therefore with my body I'm supposed to um, give God glory and honor because that I, wherever I'm at, I'm at the altar. Oh, it don't have to be Sunday morning for me to be at the altar. But when I'm in Oh, let, let, let me, I'm, I'm going to mess with some folk, and, and y'all going to think I'm petty, but I'm just messing with me, so, so I ain't talking about y'all, so, 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 so don't judge me, and don't judge yourself. But whenever I'm in the, 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 the Taco Bell line drive through I'm still at the altar. I, I, I really shouldn't be excusing myself from worship just because I'm about to get me a gordita. Or my favorite, a chalupa. I, I seen a hand back there in the, in the, in the, in the, I see you up there in the balcony. Chalupa beef supreme with 
see, I repent, Lord. I repent. I bring my, I bring my sacrifices. I bring my, my brokenness before you, Lord God. <laughs> we can excuse ourselves from moments of worship. Because if I am the temple of God, that means everywhere I'm at, I'm at church. Which means I don't have to wait till Sunday morning to worship, but I'm in worship wherever I'm at. So even when I'm in the midst of an argument with my wife, I, I should realize in the midst of the fight, I'm at church. And if I went and act crazy in front of y'all with my wife, here, I shouldn't be acting crazy behind closed doors with my wife at home because I'm at church. <laughs> That's why God says, men, when you don't love your wives, I won't even listen to your prayers. He said, I, I don't even want to hear it. And, 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 and wives, it said husbands love your, your, your wives, but wives honor thy husband. Yeah, 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 yeah. Honor your husband. I got, see, I had to share, I, that was, this part wasn't even, I wasn't going to talk about, about, about wives, but the ladies got too riled up up in here. I said, hold on now, hold on now. Y'all want equal opportunity. Y'all, we all equals up in here now. So y'all can Y'all ready? He riding home. I told you. The, 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 the pre, he was teaching them. <laughs> Somebody know because they see they self. They see that. That's just how you be. And you think you got to get out of jail free car for the rest of the week because the preacher done said, love, honor your husbands. So everything we do is worship because wherever we're at, we're at church because it matters. It, it, it matters because it's pleasing unto God. Present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. This, this is your reasonable act of worship. It, it, is, it, is, it says holy, acceptable, and pleasing unto God. Watch this. Watch this because we have seemed to excuse this from the church because we have overdosed. We have OD'd on grace and mercy. <coughs> And so God has somehow become only a loving, forgiving, merciful God that has excused God's justice and holiness. But a holy God is a, an accountable God, which means my life ought to be pleasing unto God. And when it's not pleasing, then there's moments when it is displeasing. That's why scripture tells us it's impossible to please God without faith. God is saying, yeah, as my children, I'm looking for you to, to allow me to delight in your life. My son, my son, my son plays baseball. And um, every, 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 every good, great play and every not so great play, he looks at me. To the point, Sister Shan, I, I, I've tried to, I've removed myself. I used to sit like behind the dugout where I could kind of coach him on his swing. But I noticed he's been paying too much attention to me because he's trying, Pastor Bake, to please me. So I went to the bleachers, but he still looks for me. So I now I went to the, to the whatever side of the dugout, be it's left field or right field, I go to the end of the fence, and still he throws a bad pitch and he looks at me. And so now his field, the field that he plays at his home field, it has the parking lot. It has two tiers of parking lot behind the field. So I have gone to the top of the field parking lot and watched from outfield. And after one game, he said, Dad, you went home. Where was you at? Because he was looking to please me. And I, and, and I made him. He had a good game. But I made the mistake, Elder Tillman, of saying, no, nah, son, I would never leave you. 
I was in the parking lot now feel. And so now he still, he pitches and he turns around. <laughs> because he doesn't want to displease me, but he wants to please me. And watch this. While my love is always unconditional, I will never withdraw or reject my love or reject him as my son because my love is unconditional. The truth of the matter is there are moments in his life where he can displease me. Now, not over petty stuff like missing a baseball or, or throwing a bad pitch or dropping a ball, but, but, but if he does something ridiculous like get mad at his little brother and kick him in the stomach, I'm not going to be pleased with that. And there will be consequences because I'm going to hold him accountable because I love him. So scripture tells us how much more it says, do not rebuke the chastisement of the Lord your God. Hebrews chapter 12 is also in Psalm somewhere. Do not rebuke the chastisement of the Lord who loves you because even a father who loves you, who loves his child will rebuke or, or chastise and discipline his child. How much more will God, our father, so chastise or discipline us that God is saying there will be some moments that he will discipline us when it is necessary because we have displeased God and that is the reality. The beautiful thing is I don't have to get upset, Pastor Mike, that when God disciplines me because when I discipline my son, the reason I discipline him is because he's mine. The whooping reveals he belongs to me because if you ain't mine, I ain't going to whoop you. I know we're a graduate, ain't, ain't I use it, don't worry about it, but, but, but I'm intelligent, I, I got to do. But the whooping, the whooping is a sign that he belongs to me. The fact that he, I discipline him means he belongs to me because with the discipline also comes the blessing. I, with the discipline, he has a roof over his head. With the discipline, there's food in the fridge. With the discipline, there's clothes on his back. With the discipline, there's sacrifices for him. With the discipline, I'll make sure he will, won't go without a need. With the discipline, there comes an identity that he belongs to me. And God is saying to somebody, don't get mad because I disciplined you because that's a sign that you belong to me. And the fact that I might have whooped your butt on some stuff, understand that I'm still a way maker. I, I'm still a door opener. I'm still a protector and provider. I'm still a perfect father. I'm still there for you. I'm still willing to die and go to the cross so that you might be saved. I still love you. I still forgive you that there's Sometimes when we displease God, we ought not get upset with the consequences of our behavior, but we ought to come to the conclusion that it reveals that we still belong to him. So worship matters. Worship matters. Because everything I do is my worship. And the mindset, the mentality by which I enter into an event or go through something will, re will, will, will impact how I'm shaped by it. I I'm not going to hold y'all much longer. Well, I, I, well, well, but Brother Isaiah, will you get my, my props? I got some props. I, I actually need uh, um, probably two, at least two more volunteers. I got three of them, Pastor, Pastor Will. And, and, and I, I need two more. Come forward. Okay, I see you, Brother Isaiah. All right. All right, Brother Tillman, I got enough for all y'all. I wasn't going to use them all. Now, they, they get y'all get y'all some props. Now, I'm going to acknowledge on the front end, my props are a little bootleg. <laughs> and Elder, Elder Ross, I know we at MCOP, we do things with excellency here. But I was, I was actually sick this week, like all week long. And so I was making up my props. And they're a little, they're a little bootleg, but, but these, these individuals, watch this, they represent, go ahead and put them, put them on, they're like, yeah, Pastor, you got me with these, these kindergarten uh, uh, signs, we done graduated and you still, <laughs> if y'all would come up on, 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 the, po uh, up on the pulpit, y'all would join me up here, they represent 
the various events. Come on, you right here, Brother Josiah. Yes. Brother O.C. All right. So right there, form kind of an oval. Watch this, watch this. Amen. Amen. I know I need help. Pastor got a prop. He like, he like, let me get up here and help this man out. He's struggling. He's drowning up here. And <laughs> so if, if y'all would turn, um, just turn so that they can see the back. These represents the various events of life through which we go through. All right. We got television is trying to shape you. Being born motherless or fatherless is trying to shape you. A, a, a miscarriage, uh, it's trying to shape you. My, my wife and I, we, well, our, our first um, pregnancy, we suffered a miscarriage. It tried to shape us. It, uh, 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 somebody experienced the hideousness of rape, racism. Please turn around, brothers, and, and it, it, it Pastor, Pastor B, if you would come here, and, and as, uh, uh, Josiah, if you would come forward, Pastor Will, if y'all would kind of, yeah, well, watch this. As we go through, if y'all would face me, turn in on me. Scripture says, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. This is your reasonable act of worship. And then it goes on to say, be not conformed to this world. To be conformed, when you break down the word, con means the prefix is with. Form means to shape, which means when we go through life's, um, uh, life events, the world, and in particular, the enemy is trying to shape us. The devil is trying to use what we go through to shape us into an image that is not a reflection of God's glory. <clears throat> so we go through things, if you come, we go through things, and, and as we go through things, it's trying to, it's trying to hold me down. It's trying to form me into which I'm struggling in a way that's contrary to who God has me to be. Now, now, now y'all, y'all, y'all can let me go. These brothers. These brothers are all strong up in here. They all up in the gym like, like I've been trying to get my hand, my paws on you for a minute now. It's shaping that it all of this, uh, that the fact that I, I suffer some is trying to shape me in a way that I look like someone I was never created or purposed to be. Oh, 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 you see, watch this, watch this. Sometimes some of these things are neutral. But the mentality by which you go through them impacts how you're shaped by it. You see, a, a few years ago or two years ago, I preached here at MCOP a message called Storm School. And in it, I talked about how life, sometimes I go through a storm because of myself, because of what the choices I've made, the storm has arisen as a consequence. But sometimes the storm arises because Satan is after me and it's a satanic storm and he's trying to drown and kill me. But sometimes it's a storm because the Spirit of God has sent it and I'm in something because of God has a purpose or a calling. He's trying to do something in my life. That's why he sent Jesus into the wilderness. The Spirit of God led Jesus into the wilderness where he was tempted by the devil. That the man that was born blind, he said, who sent him or his parents? That he was born blind, Jesus said, neither. It was for the glory of God. That he was born into a situation, a storm, by which God was going to use to reveal his glory. But sometimes I'm in a storm simply because it is the season of life that I'm in. That for some of us, watch this, watch this, hang with me. COVID was sent by the enemy for some. And for some, perhaps, COVID was sent because God was trying to do something in their lives. But for a whole lot of us, COVID was just a season this world was in. And we didn't welcome it. God didn't send it. The devil wasn't even after us in particular. But because this was the season of life that the earth was in, in we went through it. And so sometimes, Elder Tillman, it's neutral. 
But the mentality that I carry with will determine how I'm shaped in it. And if I can't go through it with worship, I'm going to come out of it all misformed and deformed and, and crippled and bent over because I didn't walk into it with a spirit of worship and I started complaining and, and I started focusing and becoming down and, and depressed and, 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 and buried by my worries. I don't know how I'm going to pay for college. I don't know if I'm going to get in. I, I don't know how I'm going to survive this thing. I don't know how I'm going to survive the, 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 the death of a child. I, I don't know how I'm going to get over it. And all of life is trying to shape me and conform me into it. Come on, my brothers, get around. It's trying to shape me in its image. It's trying to bend me and break me into who I'm not created to be. But I was created in the image and likeness of God, and I got to be able to get through it. Because if I stay in it, I'm allowing the devil to steal my image. Because I was created in the likeness and image of God. But the devil wants to shape me in the likeness and image of his brokenness, his, his bitterness, his hatefulness, his unforgiveness. So, so if I stay in it and I focus on, oh, my daddy wasn't there, then I become so conformed by it that I begin to live a hopeless life and existence in which I'm full of excuses and laziness and I can't man up to anything because I'm not standing in the image of the man that God created me to be, but I'm living into the brokenness of an insecure little boy child that the devil has deformed and shaped me into because I've allowed him to press on me in ways that I couldn't resist. Hmm. The devil is after your image. Graduates, the devil is after your image. And don't be mistaken by believing that just because you are successful, you are pleasing God. Because the enemy will use the success to shape you. The devil didn't tempt Jesus with poverty. The devil didn't tempt Jesus with unemployment and no job. The devil tempted Jesus with a job and a bank account and a payroll. He says, if you will bow down and worship me, I will grant you all the kingdoms and riches of the world. He said, I will give you stuff because success and money and accomplishments, if you don't have a spirit of worship, will shape you into something that doesn't look like God. And as you all begin to thrive and prosper, God is going to do new things in you. And be careful because the devil is going to try to mislead lead you and deceive you into believing you are someone who you are not. He's trying to conform you because he's after your image. He's after your image. He's after who you look like. He's after who you reflect. And the challenge is, watch this, the challenge is because touch is sensual, sometimes even the hurt feels good. Sometimes even the failure, sometimes even the problem feels good. Watch this, we touch, touch is sensual. We, uh, a sight is one of the senses, sight and, and smell and, and, and taste and, 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 and hearing and, and touch. Watch this, when touch is too much and it's overstimulating, it produces pain. But when touch hits my sweet spot, it produces pleasure. So that even though it's hurt that's touching me, it still makes me feel good. <clears throat> so sometimes I want to stay, make a circle. Y'all can give me a little bit of space. These, these strong brothers up here, praise God for strong men. Sometimes I want to stay because it feels good to me. And even though it's killing me, I somehow 
in a distorted fashion come to love it. Because as long as I can stay here, Pastor B, being a victim feels good. Because as long as I'm a victim, I don't have to take responsibility for my own life because I always can blame what happened to me. That, that I don't have to, that, 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 the way mama didn't protect me when I was a child allows me to continue to live in broken relationships as an adult because instead of me taking responsibility for my own life, I look back and blame mama because vindicate, uh, because um, victimhood feels good. That's why racism continues and sexism continues and elite because as long as I got somebody else to blame I don't have to fix who I am I, I, I could stay here it's me it's when it's me the problem I could blame you so I don't got to work on me I don't have to deal with me because it feels good J justification feels good I could justify while I'm mean I, I could justify why I am the way I am. But God is saying, do not be conformed by this world, but be ye transformed. God is saying, it's time for you to graduate. It's time for you to get up out of that elementary level of existence. It's time for you to climb to new heights that even though daddy wasn't there for you, it's time to graduate and be a father to your own child. And you got to accept the responsibility of maybe baby boy going to have some issues for the next three to five years, but you can't cop out and bail out because you've abandoned him for 15 years now step up and be the man and say I own his son I'm sorry I forget I apologize please forgive me but I ain't going nowhere now I will take up my cross and die to my own pride and selfishness and son I will be there for you baby girl I will be there for you it's time for someone to get over what has you have gone through and say I'm graduating I'm coming up out of what I was down in I know longer will I allow it to choke me out and strangle me and hold me back and keep me down but I'm coming out what I went through yeah, if y'all fellas will come down here and make make the same make a similar circle watch this and I'm out of the way watch this <coughs> and I'm out of your way oh somebody you, you graduating you got to see this you graduating make make make, make a two-man uh, soul train line that I could walk through graduating I'm graduating I, because God says don't be conformed don't be shaped by it but he says be transformed through it which means to transform trans the prefix is to transit to transit means to go through pack transit goes through the city so when, 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 when I, I transform, when I, in order to be transformed, I got to be willing to transit. I got to be willing to go through it. So even though I'm being shaped by it and it's trying to hold me back, if I'm a worshiper, I'm going to keep praising God in the midst of it because I'm not going to let me stop me because I'm a push forward. I'm not going to let you keep me down. I'm going to get through it because when I get to the other side, I'm going to be transformed by it. I, I got to get through it. I, I can't go around it. I got to be transformed by it. Stay there, stay there, because watch this. Transit, transform. I love, I love a language because it has multiple meanings. To transform not only means to transit, be formed through it, but transform also means to transcend, to be shaped over it. That when I'm transformed, I transcend. Yeah. So now I'm over yeah. what I used to be down in. <laughs> so because I'm transformed, because I was willing to press through it and get through it, the transformation allowed me to transcend to now be over it. 
So that now, watch this, hear me, hear me. It don't mean I won't sometimes deal with the stuff I used to deal with. It don't sometimes, great, 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 great. I'm still going to have to deal with it at times. But I no longer got it around my neck. I, I no longer got it around my head choking me out. But now it's at my feet. I'm over it. I, I got the victory. God said I'm giving you the victory over it because I place all things at your feet. That that's why scripture says, oh, what is man that you are mindful of him, mindful of her, that, 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 that you have made them a little lower than the angels, that you have visited man, and, and you've ordained him, you've crowned him with glory and honor, and placed all things uh, under his feet. You said first, you have given him dominion over all the works of your fingers, and placed all things under his foot, so that now because I'm in Jesus Christ, watch this, it might bruise my heel, but I'm going to crush his head. Oh, do I got any graduate? Do I got any devil head crushers? Do I got any demon stompers? They said, no, I've graduated. I, I no longer am I just down in it, but, but I, I'm going to step on the stuff that used to choke me out. I, I'm going to step on the stuff that used to strangle me. I, I'm getting over it. Any graduates up in here, you know God is graduating you over some stuff. God is matriculating and growing you up. God, God is saying, I'm moving you up. Huh? No longer will you die by it. No, no longer will you be afraid of it. No, no longer will you be scared of it. But God is saying, I'm blessing you to be a graduate because I'm matriculating you. As we rise to our feet, somebody, somebody, you're graduating. You're graduating. Thank you, my brothers. You're graduating. God wants you to know you're graduating. Your identity is worship. And, and the enemy wants, the devil, excuse me, the devil doesn't want you to understand who you truly are. And that's why it's important to worship. Because it's essential to your very DNA, the very DNA, the identity of who you are. You are a worshiper. And your power is found in your purpose. Your power is found in your purpose. Because, and watch this, watch this. Purpose is only found in the presence of the one who created you. So if you want power, you have to identify purpose but if you want purpose you have to get into his presence and worship is the means by which you enter into the presence of God and say Lord here I am here I am with my broken self here I am here I am with all my successes and accomplishments Lord here I am here I am with my challenges, my fears, and my, my issues, my anger. But Lord, here I am. Here I am with my shame. I'm, I'm still ashamed of some things I've done and, and, and who I was and, and what I settled for. But, but Lord, I bring it to you. Here I am. Uh, God, God, here I am with all, all the beauty of, of what you've accomplished and, and the multiple properties that, that I own, Lord God. And, and I thank you for what you've done, that, that I went from, from projects to owning three properties. But, but God, that, that ain't me. I, here I am. Here I am. That, 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 that I understand, Lord, that, that naked I came into this world and, and naked shall I leave. But, but blessed be the name of the Lord my God because nothing else defines me apart from who you are. That, that here I am, God. That Lord, 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 oh Lord. That even Lord God, when, when, when I attempt to allow the stuff of creation to define me more than you who are my creator, God, here I am, Lord God. That, that when Adam and Eve sinned that, and it began to shape and steal their image, they, they began to reach for the stuff of this world to, to try to cover them up and mask themselves in fear, hiding behind fig leaves that, that the Prada and, 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 the, and Ralph Lauren and, and the Gucci. Lord, that this stuff don't define me. It doesn't make me. Lord, here I am. And someone is here this morning. 
God isn't calling for a spectacular event. He's, all, he's only asking for your heart. He's calling you to come forward. He's calling you to the altar to present yourself. Yes, where you are is an altar. But there's also something about collective worship. There's also something about evidencing. This is my sacrifice, Lord, and I'm not ashamed of it. And so for someone whom God is calling to graduate, now is a moment where you can behave what you believe. Where you can come forward and say, I don't care who's watching. I don't care who's looking. Lord God, I present myself humble and naked before you. You are my covering. You are my covering. And so for confession of faith unto salvation, for the purpose of prayer, for the purpose of surrender and sacrifice, the altar is open. The altar is open for you, my brother and my sister. God is looking for a sacrifice. And the sacrifice is a broken heart broken and contrite spirit that God will not despise that when he rejects the full moons when he rejects the burnt offering the sacrifice God will not despise when it is your heart will there be one God bless you my sister will there be one will there be another will there be another Come on, he's not just calling uh, for somebody who's, who's giving uh, their life to the Lord for salvation. He's, he's inviting somebody who, who says, I'm graduating. God, God is calling me uh, to a space of graduation. He's calling me to, a, to another level of faith. Come on, come on, come on. Listen. Yeah, yeah. Come on, God, God calling me higher. He's calling me higher. Come on. Come on, he's calling me higher. Is he calling you higher? Woo! We're just going to take a moment to seal this word in his presence. Come on, come on, press in, my sister, right here. Come on, I need some other leaders down front just to check in on them. Because, come on, anybody know that rain's going to come in your life? Anybody know that winds are going to blow? But somebody in here says, you know what? I'm graduating. I'm, yeah, I'm graduating from hay. Woo! I'm graduating from a, a foundation built on sand to a firm foundation. Come on, come on, wherever you are. My sister, my brother, I'm graduating. Yeah, I'm going up higher. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not staying where I used to be. But God want to do something new in my family. Yeah, yeah. He want to do something new in your family. Yeah, yeah. I feel that. I feel that real strong. Real strong for y'all, my brother. He want to do something new in your family. Yeah. Come on, come on. What everybody's saying is that coming forward is I, I, I want to I wanna build my life on a firm foundation. Woo! That's going to get me to the place God has destined me to be. Come on, come on, come on, say that. Say, rain came. Come on, somebody say, my house. Come on, anybody build their house on a firm foundation? I'm safe with you, God. I'm going to make it through. Come on, say rain. Winds blew. Yeah, my house was built on you, Lord. Come on, I'm safe with you, Lord. And I'm going to make it. Yeah. Come on, say The winds blew. Come on, we're building a house on you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to make it.
for those of us that need encouragement, I need you to know.